In Tazewell County, Virginia, there is a remote hidden valley surrounded by breathtaking mountains and the friendliest community you'll ever meet. And some people call this place God's Thumbprint. This is Burke's Garden in Virginia. It's the highest valley in Virginia. And quite frankly, it's in the middle of nowhere. It's this hidden jewel of farms that is absolutely amazing. And from now on, I think this is Virginia's new best kept secret. At least it was a secret kept for me. My daughter Crystal is the one who identified this as a place that we needed to check out. And that's what we're doing in this video. Carolyn and I are chasing autumn leaves once again like we do every fall. And like I mentioned in a video on our other channel, Breathe, we call autumn leaves chasing falling, which isn't the best marketing term for finding the most brilliant autumn colors in scenic locations. Well, whatever you want to call it, this year it's been tough finding amazing autumn foliage. You know the story, we didn't get a lot of rain this summer to help the leaves reach their full potential. And I learned while making another falling video that even during autumn, the weather needs to be cooperative. Apparently, you need chilly but not freezing nights and bright sunny days to make the leaves more brilliant. Either experts are making this stuff up, or leaves are really picky. Now don't get me wrong, there are amazing colors this year, but you have to work a little harder to find them. Many months ago, our youngest daughter Crystal said that we should consider visiting God's Thumb print. And immediately I thought, God's thumbprint? Wow, the government really is overreaching if they're even asking God for his fingerprints. <laughs> but then Crystal told me to chill out and that she was talking about an actual place here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Now we were grateful for Crystal's suggestion, but we added this location to the bottom of our list because honestly, despite all the videos we've made in Virginia, we've never heard of this place. When you're failing at falling, desperate times call for desperate measures. So we headed to Tazewell County, Virginia to find out about God's thumbprint, officially called Burke's Garden. Depending on traffic, Burke's Garden is about an hour off Interstate 77 or about an hour from the city of Tazewell, Virginia. Tazewell County is in southwest Virginia and contains portions of the Ridge and Valley Appalachians and the Cumberland Plateau. If you're in the mountains a lot, you'll recognize immediately that the mountains and valleys in Tazewell County are very unique and so very beautiful. Burke's Garden is one of the most unusual areas. First, this valley is over 3,000 feet above sea level. East of the Mississippi, that's a big deal. Not to mention that the valley is bowl-shaped. From space, or in this case, Google Earth, it looks a little bit like a fingerprint. It's like a literal hidden valley. Now, if you're from the Southern Appalachians, you're probably asking, why isn't this called a cove instead of a valley or a garden? And maybe a better question is to ask, what's the difference between a valley and a cove? And it turns out there isn't one. I've talked about things like this in other videos. For example, mountain grassy balls of the Southern Appalachians are called sods in the Northern Appalachians. Yes, there are some minor differences, but essentially, they're the same thing. It's kind of confusing, and honestly, it leads to some real misunderstandings, but that's too much to get into in this video. Anyway, different regions use different names to identify and describe different locations. Cove is a term used in Southern Appalachia for areas that look like this, but here, it's called a valley. But to me, the coolest aspect of Burke's Garden is that there's only one paved road leading into this amazing valley. One way in, and one way out. You're completely surrounded by mountains. You're sort of in a bowl, if you will. It reminds me a whole lot of Cates Cove in Tennessee, if you're familiar with that area. It's a lot like that, but a giant version of it. I mean, you are absolutely completely surrounded by mountains here in the highest valley in Virginia. Normally, I wouldn't go into this much detail about directions. 
Okay, I do this in all my videos, but that's not the point. Nevertheless, stay with me on this. I'm trying to make a point. Whether you're heading to Burke's Garden from Tazewell, Virginia, or you're arriving from Interstate 77 like we did, you end up on Virginia Route 61. And it's great. You can make a loop around this amazing valley and enjoy the scenery. It's fantastic. But the only other road out of this valley, Virginia Route 623, is on the opposite side from where you enter. Virginia Route 623 is an incredible dirt and gravel mountain road that crosses the Appalachian Trail. This road takes you to an amazing scenic view from above. I'm told it's an awesome drive if you drive it all the way through. It goes through lush forests with occasional partial mountain views, but this is as far as we can go and it's pretty nice. There simply wasn't enough time to explore all of Virginia Route 623, but if you're wanting to enter the valley from this mountain dirt road, it's recommended that you bring a chainsaw, and it's off limits during the winter. Eventually, this road leads to the next county in Virginia Route 42. But on this trip, we simply didn't have the time to go exploring. So other than this dirt road, there's only one way in or out of Burke's Garden. This is a hidden valley completely surrounded by mountains. One way in and one way out. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty amazing. And I'm not sure why, but I think the fact that there's only one way in and one way out is so cool. It's like something out of a Stephen King novel, and, and I don't even mean that in a bad way. But here's the thing, you better use the restroom and fill up with gas before crossing the mountain from any direction and entering Burke's Garden. The valley is about eight and a half miles long and about four miles wide. Obviously, it's not God's thumbprint, in case you were wondering. It resembles a large volcanic crater. Most experts say that it was formed when underground limestone caverns collapsed. But don't hang your hat on that theory just yet. Other experts believe that the valley was once a lake, and even other experts believe that a meteor carved out this valley with a tremendous explosion. And some people are really stuck on the volcano idea. I mean, look at it. But the problem is that there's no evidence of a volcano or meteor. And that's why most experts stick with the collapsing limestone cavern hypothesis, which is kind of a lazy theory that only requires the presence of limestone to be plausible. I'm gonna leave that last statement right there and let someone pounce on it in the comments. The truth is that we don't know how it formed. population here in Burke's Garden is around 300, and there's no cell service or cable television. There's no post office except for this place which says post office, but it's really a wonderful gift shop. There are no stoplights and no newspaper deliveries, but then again, who reads the newspaper anymore, am I right? All of this, at least to me, sounds amazing. And in case you're wondering, there is property to be purchased. It's not like all the land is completely locked up. I left a link in the description in case you're curious. I also left a link to Joe Tennis's article in Virginia Living. It provides some detailed information about Burke's Garden that you might find really interesting. I really enjoy the article. Anyway, there's an Amish community here and a pretty large retirement community as well. This valley was first surveyed way back in 1748. A member of the surveying team, James Burke, is said to have thrown away some potato peelings while cooking. A year later, when the party returned to the area, they found potatoes growing in the area where the pills had been left. The area was dubbed Burke's Garden, and the name stuck. Whether the story is true or not, it turns out that the valley is extremely fertile. While this area is remote and isolated, it's not been unknown to the outside world by any stretch of the imagination. Back in the late 19th century, the Vanderbilt family, as in George Vanderbilt II, you know, the guy that built America's castle down in North Carolina, he tried to buy all of this valley and all the mountains surrounding it too. But no one was interested in selling their land. So George looked elsewhere to build his modest mountain home. So yeah, this place is isolated and remote. But for Appalachian mountain enthusiasts, it's been on the radar for a very long time. But it's not really a tourist destination. Not yet. To my knowledge, there's only one restaurant in the garden, Maddie's Place, where you can enjoy a wide selection of Amish prepared food and baked goods, in addition to specialty items. I had a hamburger on fresh sourdough, it was simply amazing, and I found a house and a cabin to rent if the need should arise. But this is more than a place to just get away, it's a place where you go back in time. A 
just one more thing about George Vanderbilt and Burke's Garden. On many websites, Burke's Garden is often described as Vanderbilt's first choice, but I'm unable to find an authoritative source backing that claim. From the looks of it, Burke's Garden would have been the perfect place to build the Biltmore, and from what I can tell, he did send agents to inquire about the property. But George Vanderbilt's original tract of land in North Carolina, well, it was a lot larger and far less populated than Burke's Garden at the time. But if you can find more detailed information that kind of validates that story, please let us know in the comments. But for right now, it sounds more like legend than truth. But you know what they say, never let the truth get in the way of a good story. So yeah, Burke's Garden is George Vanderbilt's first choice, sort of. I almost didn't make this video because Carolyn and I visited Burke's Garden as an afterthought. We didn't feel like the video I captured did this amazing place justice. Neither of us felt like it was the best day or that we had favorable weather to capture the essence of Burke's Garden. And yet we had a wonderful time. You know, I don't think Carolyn will mind me saying this at all. She's a lot more critical than I am about places we visit for our channel, and she absolutely loved Burke's Garden and we're planning to return. I love it too for that matter, but like I mentioned just a moment ago, it's more of a drive through destination than a stay-over touristy destination. And I could be wrong, but I don't think that's going to change any over the next two years, and I'm not sure I would want it to change. It would be a great place to live for a year while writing a novel. In fact, I would love to read a novel that was set in Burke's Garden. A mystery or something. Somebody write that quickly. But here's the thing, as remote as it is, you're less than a couple of hours from Interstate 81 and only an hour from Interstate 77, and that makes it a perfect drive through destination. And here's some advice. Make sure you use the restroom and fill up with gas long before you begin driving across the mountain leading to the garden. Make sure you eat at Maddie's once you get to the garden. You'll thank me later. And remember, this is one of the friendliest valleys in the state of Virginia, so be sure to smile and wave back at the locals. It's how they roll. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you've clicked the like and subscribe button, and don't forget to leave a comment. My name is Bill Marion, and this is A Nose for Life. Hey, one more thing. If you like this video, you'll probably like one of these videos too. Check them out.